What's up, people? I am back for another video. Today, I decided to review The Fog. Probably, in my opinion, one of Carpenter's most underrated films, and it's understandable, right? I mean, you look at the man's catalog. Halloween, the original. I'll even throw Halloween 2 in there. Escape from New York. The Thing, which actually I was just watching. Paused it really quick to do this video. Um... You know, so many, you know, Prince of Dark. I actually think he has another underrated movie I'll probably do next month. Uh, called It's called Vampires. One of the most underrated vampire movies ever made. I, I'll definitely review it. It's really good. But yeah, like, just the man has made so many good movies. But this one, I've only seen once. I, I watched, I think it was after one day. It was, it was either on AMC or it was on a movie channel. And... I th I'm leaning towards AMC because I think it was like Fear Fest because Halloween was on and that because it was Carpenter that came on and I really you know I was like oh this is an interesting movie but watching it again it's such a good one a lot of Halloween alumni I mean you have um, Jamie Lee Curtis you have Tom Atkins from Halloween 3 who actually I didn't I like because I just like I looked up the cast and stuff his name was Nick Castle in the movie I, who, who's he's the actor who played Michael in the original film. I, I like did not put two and two together. I'm like, oh my god, that's fucking clever. Um, you have the actress who plays Annie. Um, you have Charles Cyphers who was uh, Bracket, um, her dad. But like, yeah, like a lot of Halloween. But besides Donald Pleasance, like I think if you just had him, it pretty much yeah, you would have everybody. But this film in general is really good. The music, the score, all, it's like the fact that Carpenter, one of the things like that makes him so good Mike, with his movies, he scores his own movies, you know? So the fact that like the music in this is like almost all his music in his movies are bangers. And I love like the way it starts out. Like it starts off like a normal town, you know? There's this town called, I think it's Antonio Bay, that... You know, it's a normal town. Everybody's doing their thing. You have Adrian Barbeau, who, man, fine in this movie. Um, you might recognize her. She's in a couple of other Carpenter films. She was um, in the in, um, Escape from New York. It's probably their most other famous Carpenter appearance. But <clears throat> she was great as Stevie. She's like the radio DJ, you know, and she's known, like, and a lot of the town just listen to her. And like, that's like, it starts off like a normal town. And then, yeah, you hear about the Father Maloney reads a journal which tells of the actual story of these pirates that basically the town conspired essentially to get rid of them so they can take their treasure, which is used to fund the, the town. And then the fog, rose, fog rolls in with the, the ghosts of Blake and his crew. And man... The, the zombies are really good. Pretty crazy kills. Um, I love the tension building. It's a slow burn, but it's it's not too slow. Like, I think it gets going pretty quick. And, like, when the fog rolls in, like, when he kills, like, these random group of fishermen, it was awesome. Every time it appears, the fog looks good. And, like, there's just shots, like, because um, um, Stevie's um, doing her DJing is DJing from, like, the, from a lighthouse, so she's, like, looking, there's just shots of her looking outside at the beat, at the ocean, and it looks really good, and you can see, like, the fog rolling in, and it looks great, it's almost like she's, like, the eyes of the film, because, like, she's doing her own thing, like, she's not involved with the main group of characters, like, so you have a, um, Nick Castle, he's, like, kind of, like, a local fisherman who's just driving one day, picks up hitchhiker Elizabeth, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, and Basically, they're kind of put together. And yeah, this film is not a character film, and it doesn't have to be. It's more about the fog and its effect on the town and um, Carpenter building that horror suspense. That's more what this film's about. Like, it's not necessarily like... Like, Halloween did both, like, where you do learn about more of these characters. The characters are kind of basic in this. You know, Nick Castle, Tom... Matt, I know it's so weird to say that. <laughs> you know, it's so weird. But, um... Yeah, Tom Atkins is just a fisherman. There's not a lot to him. Same with um, 
Elizabeth. She's just a normal girl. Like, not a lot to her. And it works, you know? It keeps it simple. It makes it feel like they're just real people. So, and they pretty much have to survive. And slowly they realize, like, for a while, only, like, the audience who's watching the film knows about the zombies. Revenants, they're not zombies, but like the Revenants. And honestly, the Revenants look pretty good. It still holds up. And they're creepy. And I love like just like when the fog rolls in and the, the music plays. Like it has its own music. Like, yeah, it's everything. All the, like, the recipe to make a great Carpenter film. Heavy recommendation. Especially for like around this time getting closer to Halloween. So... Um, I would probably give this film like an almost a ten. I would probably say a nine, but yeah, it's a very good film, very underrated. You know, it's not it's not like it's just it's unfortunate, not unfortunate, but like just compared to its other catalog, it does get forgotten about. But I would definitely recommend it. It's has all the tension, simple film. But yeah, um, before I get started, um, I guess I'll go into what I got planned for the week. So this video, tomorrow, I will be doing Prom Night 4, and the next Tuesday we'll be doing the remake, and I'll be kind of done with that. Then Wednesday, I <clears throat> most likely will be earlier in the day, I will be doing Jeepers Creepers 2, which I have not watched in a while, so um, I can't wait to watch that again. Then Thursday... This is actually going to be a first time for me. And it almost, in a way, should revoke my slasher fan card. I am going to be watching Phantasm for the first time. I feel like this is a film I should have watched so long ago, but I have decided to finally watch it. Figured it's the perfect time now. And I figured I'm going to start early because there's a... I think there's like four or five films, so maybe more. So I figured let's get started now before, like, because... October rolls in because I have a lot of stuff planned for October, including Halloween themed stuff because you know Halloween ends is coming out. So, figured get started a bit early. <clears throat> so, I'll be doing that on Thursday. And then Friday, probably like during the day, I will be talking about because the last, about the last month minus the last few weeks, I have been watching Buffy. So, I figured now that I finished it um, last Friday. I figured I will be doing a video about it. And I, I wanted to do Angel because I'm still watching Angel and do both, but that would take too long. So I'm going to do them in separate videos. And I feel like the Buffy video is going to be a while. So it probably will be split into two parts. We'll see. But yeah, I'll be doing that on uh, Friday. And then, yeah. But the, I will be getting started here on The Fog. I heavily recommend again. Especially if you're a John Carpenter fan. Just the tensions there, the music, just everything. And decent characters to follow. You know, they're not deep, deep characters, but they work. <coughs> so the movie opens up. <coughs> <clears throat> Mr. Mackin is telling these kids a horror story. <coughs> Sorry about these pirates. <coughs> Basically, this kind of goes into the original story about <coughs> the um, Blake and his men were like these group of pirates that these six conspirators decided to come together and take them down and steal their treasure. And pretty much they all drowned and and then we kind of jump and this is where we meet um, Father Maloney he's a preacher and just the way the film starts like you just see this town in Antonio Bay you have Stevie um, played by Andrew and, uh, and blah, Adrienne Barbo I thought she was great in this I was like cause she's like the voice you know because throughout the film she's just known as the DJ and yeah, you see this town doing their normal stuff, and it just, it's the same with, like, Halloween and even The Thing and, like, all his other films. Or at least specifically his more horror films, where it does, like, start off, like, normal. It's just this normal town. And then, um, 
Father Maloney finds um, a journal from 1880, and that's where he sees the, the information about the town, that basically the treasure that was stolen from these pirates were used to build the town. And then these group of fishermen are hanging out, and... Well, before this happens, before that happens, we meet Nick Castle. I'll just say Nick, but it's just kind of funny. I just like the fact that I didn't put two and two together while I was watching it. Um, yeah, he picks up Elizabeth. Um, they kind of start talking, because this was still in the 70s. Yeah, you should not hitchhike, but yeah, this was in the 70s still when you kind of people just did that. So, and yeah, Tom Atkins is great. Speaking of which, side point. Um, sometime next month, I will be doing Halloween 3. So, um, just wanted to mention that just because Tom Atkins was in this. So, and then while they're driving, like, the, the windows just shatter out of nowhere. And, uh, yeah, these group of fishermen are hanging out. And then fog starts to roll in. Um, and then, you know, they, the men think nothing of it initially and then the revenants show up and pretty much kill all of them and decent kill scene and the the fog is well done it looks pretty good and just simple effects and it's probably just like a fog machine they probably just used that's the crazy part and i love that they don't give you too good of a look at the revenants because they probably Wanted to keep it. I, I think it was the right amount you saw them. So they end up killing the fishermen. And then go to the next day. Um, Stevie, who ha who brought, like, um, who's at the lighthouse. Um, you know, um, DJing. Uh, throughout the film, this weatherman, Dan, played by Charles Cyphers, is like, he's like basically hitting on her the whole time, but she has a piece of wood that's from, um, from like the, the sea her son found. And while this is happening, um, uh, Nick and Elizabeth are like investigating, because he's a fisherman, so they check the, the pier and notice they find they don't know they find like a body and notice the missing sailors and i i really love like that you like pretty much we're the only ones who know about the revenants i love that like basically when the, the characters actually find out later on i love that kind of writing so they go to the the autopsy while they're the the body attacks them and actually before this, um, I gotta go back real quick. While Stevie, Stevie's DJ, that plank of wood freaks out and it, um, takes over the, the radio for a second and basically, uh, like a dark, like a, you know, a scary voice says, we need six, basically six bodies to make up for the six conspirators to die. Um, so... Going back to the scene I was at, uh, the body that was found at the, the ship uh, attempts to attack Elizabeth but falls and then writes before dying three on the ground. So body number three. Um, so it's counting. So, like this film is paced pretty good. Like, like I said, it's, it is a little slow paced, but it's not too slow. It's like Halloween or even like the thing where it is like just that they build that tension. So, like, I'm fine with slow paces in a horror film if you're building tension, and I think they do really build that tension really good. And, and we did just have a kill scene, so... So... I'm gonna jump ahead a bit. Um, that night... Um... Dan, um, back at the news station... Um, is... calling in to, uh... Calling into Stevie and talking to her after she had just got done talking to Nick. Um, and uh, he's trying to like be casual while she's. She seems like kind of tense because she's notices the the fog rolling in and it's acting at normal and it's glowing. And she mentions that. 
And the scenes where she is, like, looking outside the lighthouse and you're seeing, like, the, it looks really good. Like, it's a really good cinematography in this film for the time. Um, and then, yeah, like, the shot of, like, the fog rolling in behind Dan, like, the, the fight behind Dan. Like, it's, like, such a good shot. And then, yeah, he goes to check. And then you hear him get killed by, a. Uh, by one of the revenants, and like when he opens the door, he has like this red light, such good lighting. Like Carpenter, I really think goes all out in this in terms of like the the effects and stuff. So after that, they um, realizing her, her house is potentially in danger, she calls in to the house to make sure like. That better kids are safe. She even publicly says it on the radio where she lives. And Nick and Elizabeth are listening, so they go there. And so Stevie's house gets attacked. They end up killing the babysitter, the revenants, and then um, Nick manages to save her son. Save, uh, well, save Stevie's son. And then they end up driving and going to um, the church. And while there, her, um, like, uh, I can't think of the old lady's name, and, and her assistant, Sandy, or Sandra, um, are at, and Father Maloney are at the church, and they basically have to try to protect themselves, because they need the, the revenants want the six bodies, while Adrian is trapped in the, 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 uh, lighthouse, because, fog starts rolling in around the lighthouse and that sequence was really awesome because she, throughout the film she's by herself like she's not really interacting with other characters like like minus through voice like she's not like part of the main group while the other groups at the church so i love that like juxtaposition like she's by herself so she has to like basically lock herself in while the people at the church have to Father Maloney pulls out a giant golden cross to kind of protect themselves, but the a revenants start rolling in. Then um, Father Maloney offers the treasure back, and then they or something happens essentially, and the revenants disappear. And so far, I've only killed five people. And, you know, everything seems normal. And I love, I love how, I love when Carpenter does things like that, where it seems like it's a happy ending. Even the thing, like, where it's, because the thing leaves you with the question, is it really a happy ending? But, yeah, same thing here. So everyone leaves, but besides Father Maloney, and he realizes, why is there only five? And then Fog starts rolling back in. And then the Revenants come back and kill him. Like, awesome ending. Overall, awesome movie. Very underrated. I, I really, like... It, it's the tension, the music. And I think the music is what makes a lot of the tension, too. Um, I think the Revenants were a solid threat. I like that you don't get a too good of a look at them. Like, even my thumbnail with the poster, they're just like these red-eyed, like, skeleton-looking things, which works. The kills were good. The kills you got, I think you got a decent amount of kills, honestly. Decent performances, like, nothing great, but it doesn't need to be great. The tension is what made the movie, so it's only an hour and a half. I would heavily, I would watch it, especially if you love Carpenter. Yeah, it's classic Carpenter stuff in there. Really good cinematography. I mean, like, the shots of the fog, like, when, when Dan, like, opens the door, and the fog's rolling, and you also have, like, this red lighting, it looks really good, like, or when Stevie looks outside the lighthouse, and she just sees the fog rolling in over the ocean, it looks really good, like, shots like that, so, 9 out of, 9, 9.5 out of 10, you'll love it, um, it is a bit slow, but it's not too slow, so. But yeah, guys, um, I'm happy I watched that again. I'm definitely going to be watching that one more often and probably throwing that in the rotation for closer to Halloween time. 
But yeah, tomorrow I will be watching Prom Night 4. That one I am, once again, going to be going in blind. I wonder if it's going to be as batshit as Prom Night 3 was. I hope. But we'll see. But yeah, guys, I will be... I'll cheers one more time. And yeah... As usual, I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. <coughs> Fuck the Biden administration. Um, but yeah. Peace. <laughs>